G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and this is all that's left of what once was a pile of rich cow dung. But this is not just any cow manure. In this video, I'm going to show you what happens and why I added garden worm eggs to a pile of steaming cow dung. Let's get into it. Seven months ago, I got a trail load of cow manure from a local dairy so I could use it to top dress our garden beds. Because cow manure isn't just good fertilizer, it also improves soil structure and water holding capacity. It's hard to think of anything better or for overall garden health and growing a ton of vegetables than adding this stuff to your raised garden beds. Except there is, and that's cow dung with garden worms. Garden worms are nature's silent underground laborers. They help to aerate the soil by burrowing around, allowing plant roots access to oxygen. And worms also consume organic matter, turning it into fertilizer and even richer soil for plants to thrive in. So it makes sense to have a healthy worm population in your garden. But sometimes when you're refurbishing a garden bed or when you're building a new one, it's handy to give the natural worm population a boost by adding some more. I'll talk about the reasons why I don't have a dedicated worm farm later in this video. But why not just add worms or worm eggs directly into the garden bed? Well, firstly, fresh cow manure is not ready for immediate distribution into a garden bed if you want to use that bed for growing plants straight away. You could, but you have to be pretty careful because fresh manure is very heavy and often too potent and will smother and or burn plant roots. Secondly, cow manure is good worm food. I remember as a young boy fishing with my grandfather, we used to use worms as bait and you'd get some from home, from the home garden, but the best place was you'd get to the river, find back from the river a paddock or two and we'd go hunting for cow pads and under every plop of cow manure you would find a whole heap of worms to be dug out of the soil or sometimes they'd just be immediately under the cow paddy. Worms eat and work the manure to quickly, within a matter of months, improve it so it can be used in the garden. At the same time those worms growing and living in the manure get transferred to the new location when you refurbish or create a new garden bed. You can add worms or worm eggs directly into the garden bed, but if that bed isn't already thriving with organic matter and have plenty of worm food in it, your worms aren't gonna do as good as they could. Doing it this way works and matures the manure and grows the worms at the same time before going into the garden. To inoculate a pile of cow dung, all I did was purchase some worm eggs from the local garden center, dig a shallow trench in the cow manure pile and cover them over. After a few months, the worm population in the manure pile had exploded and the structure of the dung started changing rapidly from a wet, stinky, poop-like matter to more a normal garden soil, only with a heap of worms in it. I then used this valuable resource sparingly as a top dresser for refurbishing old garden beds, or especially when creating and filling new garden beds to not only add nutrients and good growing soil structure, but also worms so that they can begin breeding in their new home and doing their wormy magic. A pile or trailer load of cow dung with worms can go a long way in the garden and I reckon it's heaps better than only buying and applying commercial fertilizers or soil improvers. Speaking of buying, purchasing worm eggs as opposed to live worms is cheaper. For example, 1,000 live worms is about 50 bucks, whereas a pack of over 1,000 worm eggs, because they claim to pack more than the 1,000 stated, is around $30. Although live worms are commonly sold online and in store as opposed to worm eggs. So live worms are easier to get. You might still think that $30 or more for some worms is a high price to pay. However, I think if you make this investment annually 
or even every few years, it could save money because your garden will perform better with less fertilizer and other nutrients needed to be purchased and added to the soil. If you have a worm farm, you could probably transfer some of that population into the manure pile and do exactly the same thing, no doubt about it. Why don't I have a worm farm? Well, I don't have anything against worm farms. In fact, I think they're really cool. And I certainly would not want to discourage anyone from getting a worm farm and using it to compost food scraps, garden waste, and other organic matter. But right now in my situation on three acres with plenty of raised garden beds and lots of things to do, I find it easier to treat our whole property as one big giant worm farm. We have other ways of creating compost and recycling our organic waste. As you probably already know, I even bury our kitchen scraps directly into the garden for our worm population to use and turn into rich fertile soil. Plus, it gets hot here in summer and even in winter. And also we get a lot of rain, so it makes it harder to manage a dedicated worm farm. And I just simply don't have the time to look after a worm farm separately at the moment. At least here in our garden, our worms can look after themselves, migrate up and down the depth of soil to find food and find better places to live depending on climatic conditions, current temps, rainfall, etc. All the while, the worms are improving our soil and adding to our overall gardening success, which is quite evident, if I do say so myself. A few months ago, I added some of the worm and manure mix to this newly raised garden bed that I built. And as you can see, the veggies have just thrived in it. They've loved growing in the mix. But what about the worms? So let's dig down and see by chance if we can find any of that worm population just growing randomly in the bed here. Oh, straight, straight underneath. Oh, look how healthy. I'll bring you in closer, but I, I've got to keep it in the one shot. Otherwise, you'll think that I've cut screens and, uh, and are BSing you, which I'm not. But have a look at that. That was just my, that's just scraping away some of the mulch. But look how healthy they are. And uh, dark and healthy. If I can get a proper shot out of this, that'd be nice. There we go. Wow. How cool is that? So let's bring you in closer. Yeah, they really do look nice. Put them in here and I'll bring you in closer. Okay, here we go. I've just put them back in. They've crawled down, of course. So there's some of the same ones, pretty, pretty lively. And there's several more under there. But if I dig down, carefully and try not to hurt them. But, oh yeah, you know, they're everywhere. I mean, it's pretty, healthy population. I'm sort of covering them over and digging them up at the same time, but look at the quality of that soil. It almost looks like it's worm casings. It's so dark and beautiful. And that's just a small sample of the garden bed, just in these gaps here. I'm gonna probably replant into this gap here as well. But if I was to keep digging around here, which I shouldn't do because you don't want to keep disturbing the environment, otherwise you can hurt the worms. But if I was to keep digging around, I'd find that this bed is well populated when you can just dig a random sample up like that and find half a dozen to 20 worms in such a small area. So what do you think of inoculating a pile of dung with some worms or worm eggs? Worth it? Whatever you think, write your comments and experience down in the comments section below so we can all learn. Well, I hope you liked this video. I've just got to put this Hessian back on here and be a little bit careful because there's a 
a red belly black snake right there. Gosh, he's gorgeous. You don't really see snakes through our winter, but you will in these types of situations where you have some nice sun and obviously some decaying manure that creates a little bit of warmth plus that hessian covering. But I like to cover this pile because it keeps the worms also uh, in a better environment and it stops the weeds from growing over the or through the dung and the grass growing out through the dung as well. A little bit of excitement. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you give it a big dung wormy thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Plus, share the video around because that helps heaps. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Whew.